another fabulous season five episode of this sucker known as the Everyman Podcast Show. That's right. I am John Everyman. Finally, back for another episode. This this season's got me sweating. This would be. This, this is a hot season. Yeah, this is like a very hot season that it gets me sweating. Right? Jesus. I want a cool season where I don't sweat. You know what I'm <laughs> But yeah, guys, we're back, man, and we're here, back in the studios, man. We were out of town a little bit, talking to some people in Central Florida. You know, you're going to see a lot more of that, people, believe it or not. We're, we're probably going to be taking the Everyman Podcast show a little bit. You know? We're like, we're going to go visual tour. Yeah, we're going to do like an Everyman Podcast show tour this season. Uh, we're going to be like the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. We're all going to dress in clown outfits and jump out of a little tiny car, all of us and shit, with cameras and tow bikes and shit. But uh, yeah, I had a great time up in Orlando doing that, man, and uh, we're going to do that more this year. And But right now we're home. We're back in the 305 in our, in our gorgeous city of Miami. It's not the best, but it is gorgeous. It's not. I would be the best. You think it's the best overall in everything? Oh, yeah. Right now? In total right. time? March 11th, right? Uh -huh. 2022. Uh -huh. right? I mean, it's the best. Yes. Wow. I'm, man, listen. Absolutely. Listen, man, I'm going to take my word. I'm going to rely on you for that because I, I, I beg to differ. Like, summer people driving had me not feeling like that. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I was just going to say pros and cons. Yeah. There's cons, but. Right. There you are. But that's what I was saying. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It might be. I think. I think there's rumors that spring break was around the corner. Yeah. Maybe we just started being the news again, getting all angry. You know, that's when those kind of rumors happen when like the mayor of the city of Miami Beach comes out and he's trying to figure out ways to not let anyone on the island and shit. Like curfews and curfews and too. Yeah. No hot dogs at twelve. Exactly. Like so, he's trying really hard. So you know that's when like like it's spring break. You're right. You're right. But uh, guys, man, we're sitting here with some. Wonderful people. I got a crew in the house with me. I got a co-pilot sitting with me. I've got my dear friend, who is a new addition to the Everyman Podcast Show. I know that some of you guys might have seen her in Women's Month helping us kind of co-host, but she joined the show. Her and Cynthia are both planning to take over ever since Jack left. I'm now going to be outnumbered, and that is it. I'm going to lose this show. Her and our other dear friend Cynthia, which is right now um, dealing with some personal issues, but she's not here to take for both of them. They, they're gonna, they, they'll take over here. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the writing. Yeah, I'm yeah. seeing the writing on the wall. It's, it's coming. But, but we have our friend here, Tammy. Tammy Howard. Woo! Yes? You're saving up this party girl energy. You're saving up this party girl energy? What? Where are you going? Oh, stop. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, you're going to be our party girl soon when we go out of town and shit. Okay, good. I needed that. Every, every group has to have a responsibility. Now I know that Tang is going to be the party director of everything. Hey, show has so to yeah, hey, listen. That's what, this, this little clown car that we have picks like, it packs like infinite uh, number of people. Like, you could go and we could put like you, your friends, your family, whatever yes. you want. We'll hold you guys all up with us. But uh, are you excited? Are you excited to be a part of the show now and ready for this? I'm going to tell you what I told Cynthia when she started making poor life choices. <laughs> but no, I'm happy. I'm happy to have you here. I know that having you here, you know, is going to kind of give a little more quality on top of what we've already had with the rest of the crew. So I'm happy you here. Welcome home. This is now your show. Please be nice when you kick me off and just Remember these things that I say now. <laughs> just boss now. Guys, sitting with us is an actor by the name of David Aldana. Nice to meet you, man. Yes. And I'm serious, you are our first actor on here. We have not had a chance to. That's why when it went, when, 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 yeah, honestly, thank you for coming. Absolutely. And, and like I said, I was so excited. I was like, you know what? I haven't had an actor on here. This is the first time we get to have a conversation into this realm because we've had all walks of life and you know musicians and violinists and 
um, singers and comedians and you know we've had a pro poets, aerialists, yeah, we, we've had things in here, magicians even. Magicians, yes, for shows that we need. And uh, but we've never had an actual actor dedicate themselves into that field. So this is exciting for me, honestly. Thank you, thank you so much again for being a part of this. It's exciting for me. Yes, man, I, I hope it is. I mean, we try to make it as exciting as we can, you know. Where are you from? Well, I was born and raised in Cuba. Yes, I came to the US when I was about 16 years old. And I lived in Palm Beach for a couple years ago. Okay, just then I moved to Miami. And I've been here since. Yeah? Yeah. That's amazing, but you said here you came from Cuba at 16 years old? That's what? That's, you're a young guy. You know, you don't look like you're anything near my age, which is 147. <laughs> um, but you're very young, so I'm assuming that, you know, you've spent more time at this point in Cuba than you have here. No, because I'm a lot older than I look. Really? So I'm actually spending more time here. I'm Cuban too, man. What side of the island are you from? Because I, that side looks like it's aging nicely. I don't know if my hair around right, baby, I'm drawing the hair around right back in. I'm not even, I can't even do it. Like, what the fuck? I mean, not a huge difference. I... So wait, let me ask you, just simple enough. Have you spent more time in Cuba or here? Yeah. Here, okay, so you, okay. About almost a year difference. Okay, it's time to answer. Okay, so, so, all right, so I'm, I'm going to be so All right, oh, yeah. birthday. <laughs> but, um, so you're halfway, half and half. Yeah. So you, but still, you, Spend it. Again, it's a significant yeah. amount of time in Cuba. Let's talk about that, man. I, I, like I said, I'm from Cuba. I wasn't born necessarily in Cuba, but my family was. I was one of the first handful of kids that was born here, uh, here in Miami, right? So my, my experience with Cuba is zero silks, other than whenever I walked inside my grandmother's house. That was Cuba, off the road. But for you, tell me what it was like growing up in Cuba. And first off, what part of town in Cuba are you talking about? So, um, I was born and raised in Mexico, Camagüey. Camagüey, yeah, so okay. Um, if you're not from Havana, people, you're from Camagüey. Yeah. Or San Fuego. So oh, that's 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 yeah. Those three cities, man, we rotate. You know, and any of the Cubans are from Havana. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're from that side. Yeah. My grandmother made that claim, so I'll stick with it. Yeah, you but, stick with it. Yeah, but okay, so you're from Camagüey. What was that like, man? What was it like growing up? It was different. You know, um, you live under cloud of a world that's not the real world, you know, because of communism, um, and you pretty much, you know, on a different reality in the right. rest of the world, but you feel like it feels like it's on the planet, mm -hmm. and, you know, you grow up and, like, there's no, like, sense of, like, oh, I'm I can have opportunities, so I can have, I can go do whatever my heart can this artist, which you can, but it's not, you know, the same. So, but I was a kid, I, you know, so it's school, my parents, I was not, I was just like, I'm you are, I was in the crib. Like, you're 15 and you're out on the streets, party and stuff like that. Right, right. I was never like that, I was always like a kid, I was at home with my family, um, and then my mom came first. I just remember I was, it was the last year right before I entered high school. And I said, I'm going to stay, I'm going to graduate, because all the parties, I'm not going to miss three years of high school. Right, right at the end, you know? Yeah. And then, I mean, we used to have some crazy parties. Like, it was like months of just like celebration and you just like having fun. And I remember I already knew what was coming to the US and all my friends were studying for because that's like a huge test to be able to get to university. And I was just there, like, oh fuck all this. Like, oh, <laughs> fuck this test, I'm taking my English test, baby, I'm going to And, um, but you know, very different. I was blessed and I, you know, I did have family here already. So, I didn't get to experience this struggle that all people do experience, uh -huh. but I saw it, you know, and my next neighbors, my friends, you know. You made a point in your conversation here. Uh, you said that, you know, you guys living in the poor youth, per se, felt like your experience was almost like you were living in this cloud and, you know, in this whole enclosed world, you know, separated from, I guess, the rest of, you know, civilization in the sense of, like, Western society and whatnot. When you say that, what does that really mean? Like, you guys weren't completely aware of how lifestyles and cultures for other countries existed. Is that something also that they purposely made you feel to think that you were going to see 
this world that, that you thought this was the world? I mean, it's just how it happens. Um, when you're born in a country like that, um, same thing as like, your parents are born in like, North Korea, for example. Yeah. Or, I don't want to say that they can so like, they have more access to the reality, but like, I have parents in North Korea in the sense of like, the restrictions of, at least in my experience, right now it's a completely different, you know, world because there's. The, in, the internet, I'm sorry, the internet, internet, was, the internet yeah. wasn't present. I was born in 1989, and I grew up in the 90s. Yeah, so the internet wasn't was the thing. Internet. Yeah, so it was pretty easy to have a bigger hold on, you know, what you guys do. So, like, as you grew up as a kid, you were wired to, like, just think that the U.S. is, like, the worst thing in the world, and, you know, possibly. Right, so, so they were, they were, they were they still the and then you just believe that you're like in living your best life. It's, it's kind of like, I want to say, like, have you seen the games? Yes. And, like, you know, they would make them believe, like, oh, you're a true team, you're like, you're stuck, and you're like, yeah. you're doing the best for that. You don't realize that you're just being totally manipulated and, like, brainwashed. Right. Until you get to see. You know, I mean, my mom was an English teacher. I spoke English since I was five. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't, you know. And oh, well, you like, not fluently, but like, I was all, like, whenever I was in school, like, I was always ahead, you know, with the language. And I remember I got here and I, I, I got spoke broken, but I, would, I was also able to understand and communicate until I was forced to. So, yeah, so yeah, I remember where I was born. Was, uh, was this the theme for everybody in the neighborhood? Or were people just some some people were just programmed yeah. to say I know, know this exists you know like the older people I assume obviously know what the world is like now or then even then but did they carry themselves as this I know that this is the way it is out there right. but I'm cool with this shit you get all kinds of things I mean you have people who are really loyal to the the the, the, the regime the regime the regime yeah. loyal and. To their credit, and and this is one of the probably the thing that allows these people to have an attack. It's like at the time that they took over, there was a lot of hard work. There was a lot of people who had yes. education, and they targeted the weakest link, which was like you know in the, the country, the the campesinos, like people that had no education. They're like, I'm going to give you an education, and I'm going to give you, proof. and that was someone who you know. Because they have that said, and that doesn't really understand for them that was at the time, you think in 1959. If you were poor, you were really poor. So you have someone who's going to tell you, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to give you a real, I'm going to write, I'm going to give you food, I'm going to give you protection, you know, I'm going to give you a new home. Like, you're like, okay. You know, and they did that. A lot of people got an education thanks to them. So that's facing a lot of people's mind that came from nothing. And they got from like they gave me this, so I'm right side and going south. All right, I see what you're saying. The generations grow, and there's a different type of mentality. Right. Know? The message has changed yeah. in a sense. It's now gone from hey, these people were great because they took me out of poverty to right. You know, now this is the way it is. There's no such thing now as I came from poverty. These generally these young people being born into it never knew those circumstances. I I can really see that. Uh, when it came to you and were able to finally discover what the world is beyond what you already knew that Cuba had kind of taught you. What was your feelings then? It was the weirdest thing ever because I remember getting up to fly and back to my house in South here in Miami. I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, yes. Yeah. Certain things, I was the one thing that I was like, was like, um, I saw flashing toilets in the airport. Flushing toys? The self flushing one? Oh! The sensor joints? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay, cool. And then I go to wash my hands and I'm like, you know? And then I'm like, I need to wash my hands. And then somehow my hands just like slowly just glide on it. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay. Hurry up, it's gonna leave. What were you um, thinking that? You must have thought we were so technological. I thought it was, I thought it was cool, but then I got, I got out of the car and as I drove and I'm like, you know, I... I what know, year did you get here then? It was 06. 06? Okay. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So, but to me, like, it felt like, in a sense, like, also like, oh, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if that was, that was meant to happen in my life. Um, 
you know, but I mean, I don't, I couldn't see my life going any other way. So to me, it was like, okay, this is what's about and then. So David, obviously we said you're an actor. Uh, I'm curious to know, growing up, was anyone in your family an actor? Was there entertainers in your family, or was this something in the first of your family to do something like this? How did you kind of, you know, what was the upbringing right bring it to the type of environment? You know, there was no entertainers in my family. I, um, you're the first of the family. Yes. Okay. My family likes to party. Okay. I like every single time it does. <laughs> nice well, dance. That's for sure. Um, I have to say nothing professional, but like, you know, it was always like music and like, you know, it's just yeah. that kind of environment. Um, it, there's culture in every corner in Cuba. It's so huge, you know, and it's like for me, it started with a passion for music very early. Really? And I used to have um, just like a cassette player, right? And there was a station that would connect to the TV. Whatever was playing on TV, you could get it on the radio. And if you put a cassette and you play record, it would record what was happening. So as a kid, like, I was obsessed with this thing. You know, I grew up with a classic by King, the Mermaid, and all that stuff. And it was yeah, always you're touching a nerve over there, right? <laughs> it was always the music. For me, it was always the music. I was just like right. mesmerized by it. So I wish to put all the songs, right? And also, I love like animals in the sense of like, to me, like when I was a kid, that's what I would play with. I would fly on the lake. I would sit there with a pack of like, like, old animals. And like, I want that. Like, you know, there's no way to go shopping. So, animals? Yeah. Like, stuffed animals? No, like, little plastic, like, zebras and giraffes. Oh, okay. Like, okay, like, that's a whole jungle. Shape. Okay. Every, you know, yeah, cool. yeah. And I would line them up, and it would be like a show with the music. So, you would do it like a little rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there was always that performing, you know, but inside. Right. Um, for some reason, I didn't follow the world as a kid, or as a young kid, or as a teenager, or anything. Um, what were you thinking about then? What were you thinking you were going to do? You know, I, when I finished high school, my mom, again, she, she's a very um, educated person. She has two degrees. So like in Cuba, you're expected to like the, the the academic round, right? Yeah. To because you need to be to come to the support class. So it was always good. I'm like, hey, school, you this, you that, you started, and then you become. I was just trying to talk to my Really, a yeah. doctor? Like, well, that was that was like I, I mean, no, but not because I don't I don't think I would have gotten anywhere near anything actually because it's just not me. But it was like at the time it's like okay, that's the only option. And it was and like right, you know. Well, I was funny, you wanted to do, uh, well, I mean, it was like, there's no other option, you know, and yeah. then the comment here, I, I have, okay, so, no, I lied, so, yeah, and then, because, uh, I could have gotten the acting route in Cuba, and I did see, went to, like, the school to meet up with, um, a mom of one of my friends, who was a teacher, a dance teacher, and, but I had a theater, and I went to check it out, but then I came here. Everything so, fast. so wait a second, just before you left Cuba, you already were kind of considering Trying to figure out what acting? acting? Exactly, yeah. I, I, I'm so stunned right now. Is, is acting a thing in Cuba? I, I feel like I'm being asked in something ignorant, but... I mean, there, 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 there's, 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 is there like a Hollywood in Cuba? It's not like a Hollywood, but like the theater scene, when I was going out, it was big. It was, it was theater festivals that I went to when I was in school. Um, they have their own productions. You, you get stuff from outside the country, but they have their own novelas, they have their own movies, like you go to the movie and watch really? the movie. Yeah, totally. So, crazy. But is it like soap operas? There's, yeah, all of that. There's like, so there's like some sort of famous Cuban actor in Cuba right now. There's, yeah, there's a lot of them right here. You know, you see them like, just like, you know, local channels on Miami and like, uh, really? yeah, yeah, I grew up with a lot of the comedians that are currently on TV in Miami. Totally. Yeah. Name me one right now. Damn, that, uh, I'm putting you on the spot, I can <laughs> If it comes to you, let me know. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna hold you to it. But I, I see him here, I see him, I see his face. You see his face? Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm fascinated by this because you would think, you know, such a communist driven country, it's kind of like, hey, you either had to become these professional jobs, but Hollywood didn't exist. I thought they were. Yeah. Back in the day, the dance and the music. 
We're still from the Caribbean, Mr. An Island, you know. Yeah, and it's hard. So, like, it's, I feel like, you know, it's, it's in the DNA. Like, wow. you know, you can be a doctor, but go to class and go sing a song and go dance. And, like, art is it's a huge thing in Cuba because, again, it's in the DNA. Like, it's. Wow. You were about to get into acting before I started touching up right. something with people, but then you came here. I came here. What? Where did it start to really get serious for you here? Uh, just after the pandemic. After the pandemic, I just started doing this. So, so from 2006, what were you doing all the way up to that? Finding myself. Finding yourself. Okay. You know, I had to adopt to any country. Any culture in a sense, mm -hmm. I had to learn who I was. I, I felt like I was always like 10 years behind. You yeah. know, like, yeah. because, like, it was just like, you know, I came, I was 17, mm -hmm. and I had to learn everything from child. Yeah. You know, and, and just basic human interaction. It's, it's a different culture, different culture. Right, I'm sure it was hard to keep so, up with, like, the trending topic. Right. In a sense. I and I only that I, I, I guess, as I started getting older, I was losing more confidence, more confidence, and it's the same when I go into stuff like so, you know, so it was this a kid, and I started doubting myself, and just years went by, and I tried to, I went back to it like 2013, and I was like, I was just, like, scared. Yeah, so you, you, were, so you were just in the meantime working? Working, just making money. I went into fashion, I started, I went to college for fashion merchandising, uh, Miami University of Brand Design, that did not work out. <laughs> It's not you always, you always come back to what's natural, natural, natural to you. Yeah. And after the pandemic, I just said, dude, it's like literally now, like, what are you doing? You know? And, and I said, I'm like, I'm not going to die and then just not say I did this. If it has, and, and the funny thing is that once you start doing it, just like you can see how things just fall into place because it's what you're supposed to be doing. And there's no angle, and there's no like, you know, it's, you want to succeed and you want to, you know, achieve great things. Right. And, you know, but at the same time, it's like, it's what you meant to do. Right. You thought it was natural to you. I don't like that now to see myself going. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. So you, you, you went back and you said you started, I think I cut you off when you, when you were saying, you said you felt scared at first or nervous yeah. or something? Oh, I thought that was. And I'm like, this guy has, I mean, he was really prepared. And 
that I always like to learn stuff from whenever I'm around other actors. And I take him because you learn from everybody. You know, no one's better than any other person in the room. You learn from every actor that you are about to learn. Because, you know, it's... But, anyways. Um, so I sit there, and he has a script, and he has so many notes. And I get it. And I look at all of it. 
weeks from now, like, could I, is that something that I could do, you know, like, could I actually just have an emergency or, you know, like, yeah. I think those things give a generation, like, it's a two-day issue, I can be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that COVID and I never got vaccinated, buddy, you know? Last time I checked, I was 86. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> you know, broken leg. You know, we're getting pretty soon here, getting close to our ultimate tournament that we like to do every year. Uh, so, I want to ask, name me one of your favorite action movies. Take it. 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 Yes. So, name me one of your favorite, well, we said sci-fi, so for you, Harry Potter's your favorite sci-fi movies? Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we know that already. Yeah, that yeah. And the Deadly Hobbits. That favorite comic? You know, I just have to go with Bridesmaids. It's Which one? Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. I love Bridesmaids. And the S N L. You've never seen that? It's an all female cast. Hey, but don't feel bad. I'm not even shocked, but I've never seen it either. What is your favorite drama? I have to go with. Uh, Gia with Angelina Jolie. What? Let me tell you something. That's I saw her once too, and I was like, listen, this movie was so intense. I can't watch it again. <laughs> so you just started, you know, you're a few years into uh, to your acting and you've already kind of accomplished a couple projects apparently. Right? What where do you see yourself going? You know, how yeah. Um, how yeah. I for the first time ever I'm doing what I love and I'm pursuing my dreams in a way that I've never done before and there's no stopping. You know, and I can say sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. Fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I love that with acting, you know, I feel like with acting it's very much that mantra. Sky's the limit. I feel like Music, get comedy. We'll get, we'll get far. We definitely will. But I feel like with acting, it's just like I don't know where the, that that limit of success is. I don't know where it is. It's just this endless thing that keeps happening. Where with comedy, you feel like once you hit like ten specials, you know, like what else is there? You know what I mean? We've already kind of done it in a sense. Uh, with acting, I feel like it's just endless. You know, I can agree with what you're saying. Like, I don't want to see myself in films. That's, that's the end. Like, if, if, I was, if I was to put an angle, like an end goal, um, I, want to, I, I want to see myself in films. I want to see like, Do you I see yourself want... playing the hero or the good old tires in that? You can tell me this stuff. I don't know what you're saying. I mean, you're talking to Joker or You know, but um, I probably, that's probably good here, but I would much rather be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I can see you as the nice guy, honestly. If you see him as both, I see him as the nice guy. He's yeah. so smiling. I think it's a smile that's killing me. You feel like he's yeah, like, the, like the evil, like the good guy, but he's the bad. Okay, okay, one of those. Like a, like a, like a, like a Loki. Like, I don't know yes. if I watch Loki, but yeah. like Loki is this awesome. bad guy, but they just love him. Yeah, they yeah. just yeah. love him. I, I can definitely see that. You know what? I get it. Uh, but I, I think for me personally, I think you're just such a nice guy. But but then if I look down at the tattoos, he looks like a, like he could play like the third Latino gangster in any <laughs> show. Like in Law and Order, he looks like the guy that got in the lineup and they're arresting him. That you got the wrong guy, bro. You got the wrong guy, man. It's funny you mentioned that. That's why I got the lineup once, uh -huh. and they asked me. It was, it was a small class, about ten actors. And they started, like, we had to spend only like, five for 30 seconds. And the class would just look at us. Right? Just, just, just look. And they'll be like, what are you seeing? And I got so many guys, like, guys in the I said, the tools, and we're cool, and I'm like, let's go. <laughs> so I don't do your hair. I think, I see myself fighting for the stuff that I really want to do versus the fight. Thing that I'm proud of to book. Mm -hmm. um, but I could be wrong. Yeah, you never know. 
You never know. We're in season five, we're doing something fun with all of our guests. And uh, we're going to figure out your top five. So name me your top five natural places to be. Top five natural places. But I, I mean, it's an international park, but it's natural. I've never been there, but now you're almost nice. It's, I'm dying to go. Um, I would love, to, I've never been there, but I would love to go to Iceland. Um, okay. And see the other lights. Just that feeling of solitude in the middle of nowhere, it's, it's insane. Um, Africa. Africa? Okay. I would love to, like, just walk around the world, like, all of them. Go through the Congo and shit. All the way. Like, <laughs> all the way out. For real, I'm not.
They, they said they ain't cutting the lights off. Okay, uh, <laughs> I was just making sure. You don't sure. pay me enough. Yeah, the sound guy <laughs> says it's over. Fuck you. I don't even care if I got nothing to do with the electricity. I'm just out of here.